Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I am so excited we got a new mini trailer moving into the Wheel of Time Season 2, so we're going to check it out uh, with each other, and then I'm going to dissect it a little bit and tell you what I think about some of these scenes. So, let's jump right in and watch this little mini trailer. So exciting. Are they ready? They'll have to be, won't they? We didn't defeat the Dark One. We set his strongest lieutenant free. All will bow. <laughs> so exciting. All right, so let's jump right into this. We've got Hi Lady Seraph. I love this close-up because you can see um, these raven wings headpiece. I originally thought that might have been her actual hair, which would have been so cool. they have been like, come on, RuPaul's Drag Race. But uh, the Shan Chan uh, symbol, of course, is the ravens. So this makes sense as a sort of magnificent headpiece for one of the high blood uh, nobility. <clears throat> The details on this chair are really cool. You've got some kind of like, kind of reptilian scale motif, crocodile, probably. And then these little, whatever, stars or crosses or whatever. Are they ready? <laughs> are they ready? I don't know. <clears throat> I'm wondering if she's asking, um, are they ready to take the oaths or are they ready to go do something? Uh, so you've got Uno right here, you've got some muscular, nice-looking gentleman here, you've got the, uh, Shantan soldier here, this is probably loyal. They made, they made him look very tall in here, whereas, like, in season one, he was taller for sure, <clears throat> but, uh, this makes it look like more of, like, what the Ogier, uh, described as in the books. So I wonder if they've done that on purpose, or if he's standing on something, or if he's just kind of... It's just kind of an optical illusion, but if they've actually adjusted the way that they do the Ogier, then that would be amazing, because um, Ogier is supposed to be like 8, 9, 10 feet tall or whatever, so this looks really good. Um, here's some person and some other person. Uh, I think they're just residents of wherever they are right now. There's Perrin, looking really good in this nice uh, coat or vest, I suppose. And he's looking shocked. So he might be looking at what we just saw. Um, again, you've got Loyal behind him and he looks really, really tall. So I'm hoping that they have adjusted that, uh, which is cool. Um, as we know in the trailers too, this might be a completely different scene from a completely different episode uh, or something like that because they always, they always kind of piece things together to make it look super interesting. It's going to be interesting anyway. But he could be looking on as Uno is pushed to the ground by the Shan Chen soldiers. There was Loyal. Um, the actor just recently got married, so congratulations on that. So exciting. There he's getting shoved to the ground. <clears throat> We've got different uh, styles of soldiers as well. So you have this uh, level of sort of um, sword-bearing uh, Shan Chen soldier. And then you have these kind of guardy types. Guardy is that a word? It is now. Um, with the with the with the whatever giant cone helmets and the spears with the tassels and things like that. So <clears throat> I wonder if I don't know. I just had this thought. So uh, slight spoiler: later in the series, Matt gets a spear, and one of the Shan Chen is able to recognize. The spear. I wonder if it's patterned after this. Uh, interesting thought. We'll have to see. So Uno is getting smashed down. This is a scene from one of the other trailers that we saw, but I like that they put the Great Hunt is on over the scene. So <clears throat> I was thinking earlier in one of my in my last video that they were probably on their way to try to find the Horn of Valer, and I wonder if that is just a little nod to that. The Great Hunt is on. There's Ishamael, <clears throat> who has set himself with uh, the Shan Chen, obviously, or I don't know if they know who he is, but he's somebody, and so uh, that's a nice tie. He's very well dressed. 
Um, so he is there. There's some scenes that we've seen before. There's a uh, High Lord Turok uh, and Rand. We get to watch the first three episodes. Oh, I know I'm calling into work. Um, so here's a Shamael in what I think might be the eye of the world, or it could be a cave or some place that he's looking. We know that he finds some of the other seals and releases some of the other Forsaken. <clears throat> so this might be where he is. It could be. Um, I'm guessing that at the end of season one, we were at the eye of the world. And then at the beginning of season two, uh, we might be, oh, sorry, I should have put my phone off. Um, <clears throat> we might have some flashbacks to him kind of like, uh, after everybody's left, maybe the eye of the world, he's like, ah, guess what? I'm back. So maybe this is him doing that. Although I cannot remember how he was dressed. So this could be a completely different scene altogether. <laughs> I don't know what he's looking at except the camera. That would be me. Oh, is there a camera around? There's Tarvalon uh, at night. He set his strongest lieutenant free. Oh my god. So this is probably Nynaeve training. In the books, uh, <clears throat> um, they were on a boat, and I believe this scene was Swan Sanche um, kind of like teaching Egwene and Nynaeve uh, a little bit about channeling. And so she, uh, I remember that Swan uh, held her in air and then Nynaeve like kind of returned the favor um, extravagantly. Like she can't control it yet. So I think that's what they're doing here. Leandrin is the one who's going to be training her in this scene. You can see that Leandrin is pretty powerful. Her weaves are, you know, kind of like thick weaves of the one power. So we know that she has a level of strength, at least. Nynaeve is like, oh, it hurts. Here we go. Uh, we know that Nynaeve channels the best when she's angry. So it looks like she's accessed that anger. Again, we have these beautiful new weave uh, CGI that we're looking at. This looks like air, of course. And you can see the, the kind of flowy flows of air going on as well. She's throwing Leandrin into the wall. And you can see here, <coughs> these, uh, if you look, sorry. Here we go. Uh, so Leandrin is like, and you can see the, the little bit of air going on there, right? Here we go. And she's like, oof. But it is, it is just kind of the air around the weave right here. Whereas where Nynaeve returns the favor, boom, look at this. The wind is just freaking everywhere. She's so powerful. Flying, boom, boom. You can see this is the, you know, like a, a, a hurricane or like a tor tornado of <sighs> slams her back into the wall. Oof. Um, so exciting. I'm really interested to see if they play that scene out just like the one on the boat. Here we have Rand, uh, probably waking up, I think was the theory that he woke up and burned down the inn. And I feel like that comes into conclusion. It does look like he's burning down an inn. <laughs> oh, Rand. All right. Here's something I love that I saw when the Damane... Uh, do their thing. Check out the Soldom's hands. So the weaves are coming into the Damane when she's doing her channeling, and the Soldom has a very similar motion. I believe we saw this as well uh, at the end of season one when they were supposed to do the boat, and so they were like, boom! So I don't know if it is exactly this motion every time, like, channel! Um, or if the Soldom mirror something that the Damane do. So check out the scene when you see it. When she, uh, when she pulls her hands together like this, the Soldom's hands come together at the same time, so it's very coordinated. So check that out real quick. Sorry, that was too quick. Here we go. Boom. All right, so we can kind of see. I'll slow it down a little bit. There we go. See that? Boom. And boom. 
All right, and then of course she shoots off the weave. That looks so cool! And it looks like we've got fire and air and it is swirling around. And as we know in the next one, it kind of like arcs down and blows stuff up. There's Egwene uh, blocking something, probably that weave. Hello, Elaine. I think Elaine is channeling in this one as well. <clears throat> Just because of the fact that she's so determined and she's so looking. So we've got something going on here. Maybe she does a counterattack. Alright, something I noticed here, uh, while our eyes are kind of on this part, we have this thing here, which looks like the steps of the, um, the palanquin that, uh, High Lady Suroth was on. So I don't know if she kind of has arrived here, and she's commanding these soldiers and these, uh, Damane and Suldam, but you can see Egwene right here and Elaine right there, and so they've probably, they're probably starting to run away. And they've blown something up here. But it looks like that's where that's where the meeting, you know, maybe instead of headed towards the gateway, this is the gateway that they've come out of uh, to hand over the uh, the channelers to High Lady Suroth, as we know in the books. I hope that's not a spoiler, but if it is, I'm so sorry. I like that, actually, because we see Egwene and Elaine running off now. Likely this is the same scene you can kind of see back here. You've got the trees in the background and everything. So I think that is the, the palanquin. Maybe they're here as well um, to pick up the channelers. This could also be, again, uh, the, the same scene where um, Uno is bowing down. So it's like, all oh, will bow. I, actually, now that I've just said that, that's probably what it is. But I do believe this same palanquin is uh, where Suroth meets... Uh, the dark friend who hands over the channelers. Ooh! And so I love that. Another thing I love is this accent is so good. Um, I wondered how they were going to do the draw. Everybody was hoping it would be a Texas twang, but it does seem like when you when you have when you have an accent that's not an American accent, the American accents can sound very drawly. Um, so I like the way that she's doing this. Will. Oh, will. Bow. So kind of drawy and drawly. I've made up another word. Look at those lashes. Okay, so um, that is the Wheel of Time mini trailer two. I think it's the second one. I'm so 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 excited. Woo! I've gotten bigger um, about this. I cannot wait for September first, and I can't wait to hear all the theories that are going on as well from this mini trailer. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.